In this lecture, we're going to talk about conditionals. First, we'll talk about if statements, and we'll um, show how we can do an if-else statement, and then an if combined with else, a bunch of else if statements. And finally, we'll finish up by doing a one-line conditional statement. Okay, I have downloaded the XHTML 1.0 strict template to start off this uh, web page. Um, you should do the same for all of your HTML pages so that you can validate your pages. Uh, that your pages will be valid XHTML. Um, you don't have to use the strict template. You can. You don't even have to use um, the XHTML template. You can use whatever template you you think is most appropriate for your project. Um, I'm using the XHTML strict. Uh, template because um, that's the most the strictest and it should work with most browsers. Um, now today we're talking about conditionals, um, which is making choices. So I'm going to change the title to conditionals and just put some content in here. And I'll save this file in my web directory. And let's load it up. And there we go. And so now we're going to start doing some PHP code. And the first uh, conditional we'll talk about will be the if statement. So the format of the if statement is like this, or the syntax of the if statement. If condition, and then we put brackets, uh, curly brackets. Um, you get these by pr pressing shift, and then they're by the P key on your keyboard. Um, and this notes that it's an if statement and this is going to be a condition. If this condition is true then we'll do whatever's inside of the brackets. So I'll put true here and then we can echo out some message and now when we reload the page We, we see an error, and it's telling us that we're missing a semicolon. Of course, it says it on, it's on line 12. But when we look, it's really missing on line 11. So save that, and then we'll reload the page. And now we get if statement is true. So if we want to skip this, we can also put false here. And reload that. And now we don't get that. So if this condition evaluates to true, then we, we do what's inside of the brackets. And if it evaluates to false, then we don't. Now we can also add an else onto the if statement like this. And add a, some code there. And now we get if statement is false. So right now, just putting true and false here isn't very effective, because no matter what, we're always going to do this. So why have the if statement in the first place? Well, if we have a variable, and we can put the variable inside of here. We run this, and now we can get that there. Now, a lot of times, we actually want to make comparisons of, of values. So maybe instead of a condition here, we'll call this a, a name. And we want to customize this page for certain names. And maybe if Fred is visiting this page, go color sign name equals Fred. And then we can point out a message. Maybe welcome Fred. 
And then if it isn't Fred, then we'll just go welcome guest. Okay. And then we'll reload this right here. And um, now we can see that this is welcome Fred. Now, if you notice, um, those of you who came from Perl and even Java, um, in Perl, when you want to compare strings, you had to use the EQ. Um, and you can still use the EQ. Um, at, well, actually, you can't. So when you use EQ, when you're comparing strings, you'll get an error. But, uh, so what you do is you use double equal signs. Now in Perl, you spent a lot of time figuring out, well, if this is a number, then you use a double equal sign to make, see if they're equal. And if this is a string, then you use the EQ. Well, um, PHP is a lot nicer. You just use the double equal sign for everything. Um, one important thing is to make sure that you don't use a single equal sign because then this will evaluate to true every time unless you're setting it to a blank string right here. And then it says welcome guest. Um, that's because whatever this value is is what's going to get evaluated. Now it also does the assignment as well. So now our name has been erased and we don't know what it is because we just assigned it. It's really important to remember that when we want to compare, we want two equal signs. When we want to do an assignment, we only want one equal sign, like this on this line up there. So if Fred is visiting our page, we'll do this. If, he's, if it's someone else, then we'll say, welcome guest. OK. Um, now, of course, just by looking at this code, we can see what's been set here. We can see that Fred has been set to name and we know that this is going to evaluate to true every time unless we change this up here or we change you know this string right here so maybe what we can do is bring in a custom variable call it the visitor um, through the query string and now when I refresh this it says welcome guest and if we want to um, add in up on the query string we can add in visitor again this right here should match um, this over here the names and then that means that this name right here is going to be assigned this variable right here so we'll run this and now it says welcome Fred and then if Jerry visits the page instead now it will say welcome guest so the else case right here now one thing that we can do um, a lot of times we want to, in one case, do a certain amount of HTMLs, like, like maybe if they have logged into the website, we might want to print out a log, you know, a logout box and, and a, a couple of links to visit, view their profile. Whereas if they haven't logged in, we might want to print up a, a, a form that lets them log in onto the web page. And that would be really tedious if we had to do it all with these echo statements. So what we can do with these as so we can exit our PHP mode, then we enter it in to do the else, exit it again, re enter it, and then of course exit at the end. So now, now what we have as we have a PHP code block that does this right here that starts the if statement and then we end the PHP code block and then we start another PHP code block to put the if statement now notice the brackets are still included in this PHP code block inside of the PHP code blocks and then we end our PHP code block and we have another HTML 
uh, or we enter into the HTML modes in between this if statement. So now we can include some HTML tags Now, of course, I would normally have a class and do a, a CSS style sheet to do this because all the styling should be in the CSS style sheet. And then if it's not Fred, the color blue. And welcome a guest. Let's start. Let's see on line seventeen. We have space there. And there we go. So that's because Jerry is visiting our website. We're saying welcome guest. And then if Fred this is our website. It says Welcome Fred. So again, let's see what's happening here. We get the visitor query string, name value pair. The name is visitor. The value is whatever they said it equal to. So this time they said it equal to Fred. So Fred gets assigned to the name vari variable. Now in here, we compare what's in name to the string Fred. And if they're equal, then we'll do this right here. If they're not equal, then we'll do this. So that's a good way to make um, to make decisions based off of uh, variables and inputs that come into our, our web page. Um, and again, we can customize the web page for the person that's visiting the site. Um, there. And another really important thing is how we enter and exit these PHP code blocks. If you notice, just because we exited the PHP code block doesn't mean that we just start printing out all of the HTML. We still um, follow this if statement, and if this if statement didn't evaluate to true, then we'll skip over this HTML section even, even though it's there, even though we've exited the PHP code block. That's because the if statement still can control the flow and decide what HTML code block or HTML area gets printed out. Um, that's very nice because a lot of times we want to include tags and have a condition based on whether those tags are there or not and change it around. So we can always enter and exit our PHP um, code blocks that way. Okay, now another thing that we want to do, or what we might want to do is uh, maybe we don't like Fred very much, so for whoever whoever visits this page will say welcome, except for maybe we'll say Fred is not welcome. Now. Of course, now if the name is equal to Fred, we'll say welcome, and then we'll say Fred is not welcome. But now we can change this, and we could say if the name is not equal to Fred. So this is a comparison. Um, if the name is not equal to Fred, then um, we won't. We will uh, do the welcome. Whereas if it is Fred, then we'll say Fred is not welcome. So we'll disinvite him to the site. So now we get Fred is not welcome when Fred visits. And then if anybody else visits, even Bob, we'll get the welcome. So that's another comparison we can do. Um, some other comparisons that we could do, maybe apply more to numbers, but we can also do an alphabetical sort. If their name is less than Fred, then they're welcome. Um, So Bob comes before Fred in the alphabet, so he's welcome. Um, and we'll try Jerry. And it says Fred is not welcome, but Fred Jerry comes after Fred in the alphabet, so that then we get this else right here. 
we also have less than or equal to, greater than or equal to as well. And we can also just do a greater than. So the different options for the comparisons are equal to, um, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Now sometimes you might go equal to or greater than, and this right here will produce an error. Um, so yeah, just remember you do the operation less than or equal to first. So less than or, or greater than or equal to, the equal sign always comes in the second half. Even not equal to, the equal sign comes into not half. If, and also remember if we want equal to, we want um, a double equal sign. So those are all the different comparisons we can do. And um, another thing, um, maybe we'll also get their age from the query stream. Um, make sure I'm in my PHP code block still. And a good, good thing about this uh, text editor is it kind of um, it highlights um, your code so that your code should have a highlight. If you notice that your highlights aren't quite looking right, like all of this right here, and notice all of this turned green, you might be missing an ending quote. Um, and it also highlights it has a kind of grayish background for the areas that are the HTML and a back background for the areas that are PHP. Um, Notepad++ should highlight um, things as well. It's really nice to get this good highlighting uh, syntax so that you can see what what is going on. Um, and so how I knew that the age that I wasn't in my PHP code block before is when I started typing down here is my age didn't turn the kind of um, velvet color that we have up here as my other variables look. So I knew that something was wrong right away. Um, so we get dollar sign age, um, get their age. And now we can go if their age, if they're older than, uh, older or equal to 13. So if they're 13 or older, greater than or equal to 13, we'll do uh, one thing. Um, maybe we'll also check if their age is less than 13. We'll do something else. So we can do statements here, but we can string these if statements together, else if the age is less than or equal to 13. And else if the age is less than or equal to um, 18. And else if age is greater than or equal to, 20, let's say, 25. Right here. Maybe we'll make that 16 instead. So now we have um, different conditions using these else ifs. Um, maybe go if the age is equal to 25 here, so we'll do a complete else right here. So we have different conditions. They could be under 13 years old and then we'll do this. Well if they're not less than 13 years old um, and, and actually if we walk through this logic I actually have some errors in this logic. So if they're less than 13 years old they'll do this. Now if they're greater than 13 years old then uh, we'll do this which will be everybody else. So were they either less than 13 or greater than or equal to 13, so the rest of these really don't matter. Um, once we do one of these conditions, we'll go ahead and start um, printing out less than 13. And 13 echo greater than 
16 and echo greater than or actually this equal to 25 echo um, and then we can say okay, this is default or whatever is left so if you notice um, we'll go ahead and refresh this um, we should put semicolons on these lines here as well. Save this. And notice we get less than 13 right there. Um, we still have um, Jerry um, visiting. Maybe we'll fix this message right here. So let's change this back to welcome. Because we like Fred again. Um, but back down to this if statement as well. Now, if you notice, that we don't set the age variable right here. There is no age parameter. So what gets set here? Well, it's either a blank string or a zero if we want to interpret it as a number. So, um, since there's no age query string variable, then this gets set to either a blank string or zero. And when we compare it to a number, it defaults to zero. So zero is less than 13. Um, and that's what we get printed out. But let's go ahead and maybe put the age as 8. 8 is still less than 13. Maybe we'll set the age to 14 right here. Then we say, good, we're greater than 13. OK. And now what happens when we say, well, let's see if we're greater than 16. Maybe we'll set to 18. But notice we just get greater than 13. So let's look what happened. The age is set to 18. So we say we know that the age isn't less than 13, so we jump over this condition. Then we find this condition right here, and we see that the age is greater than or equal to 13, so then we print out this line right here. Now we don't continue checking these conditions as we go. We just after we finish this line, we just jump over all of the rest of it and continue with the execution right here. So we skip this check and we skip this check right here. Um, that's important to note. Once we do one condition, we're done with the entire if else block that we have. Um, so what I might want to do instead, um, if I really want to differentiate between the, the 13 and 14 year olds and the 16 and 17 year olds, what I really will do is all I'll do is, is it less than or equal to um, 16, maybe less than or equal to 15, or I can do less than 16. That's the same thing. So this is um, their 13, 14, or 15 right here. Our age is 16 to 20, I'll put 25 here. So age is 16 to 24 right here. This is 25. And in this case, they're over 25. OK, so let's check to see if that works. So we'll refresh it first. The age is 18. And we get 16 to 24. What if their age is um, 13 or 14? And we get their 13, 14, or 15. Um, and their age is 25. Or if they're older than 25, like say 26, then they're over 25. So now we have <coughs> that separated out. 
Um, okay, so <clears throat> just to review what happens here, um, if their age is less than 13, it'll execute this and then jump over the rest of the if statement and out to here. Um, if it's not less than 13, it'll jump over that and then check to see if it's less than 16. And then it, if it doesn't match that condition, it will check this condition. And if it matches this condition, then it will execute this and then jump over the rest of it to the end. Now, if it doesn't match any condition, then we can add in this else at the end. And that can catches everything that hasn't met the condition before. Um, now, also with some of those conditions, we might want to maybe check to make sure that um, maybe more than one Fred will visit this site, at the, uh, might visit our site, but we want to make sure that it's the Fred that happens to be um, 20 years old. So we want to make sure that the age is equal to 20 and that the person visiting our site is Fred. So this means that anybody that's 20 years old and their Fred, okay? And then we can echo out welcome 20 year old Fred as well. So as we do this, um, again, I forgot the semicolon. As we do this, we get over 25. So let's see if we can match that condition and have Fred visit our page, who happens to be 20 years old. So now we get welcome 20 year old Fred. Um, maybe to make this a little nicer, put a line break there. Um, and now we can read it all. Um, now, Another thing that we can do, um, this is and, what if we want to welcome all 20 year olds or Freds? So we like Freds and anybody that's 20 years old. So you welcome 20 year old or Fred right here. So notice this person is both 20 and Fred, so he's Fred and he's 20 years old. But maybe if Jerry happens to be 20 years old as well, Now we'll see that um, Jerry, even though the name doesn't match, he's still 20 years old, so it still says, welcome 20 year old or Fred. Now, again, this is either, either they are, the age is equal to 20, or the name is equal to Fred, or both. Now, the only way that this wouldn't work is if we don't have a 20 year old, and if we don't have a Fred. So that means that their visitor is someone else and they're not 20 years old, they're 22. And then we have that condition right here. Another thing to note is we can separate these out, each one of these. We can end our PHP code block right here and we enter it in right here. Um, and so we can break out and we can put HTML in between these if else statements. So um, that's just like we did up here. So um, one more thing to, to show you is called a, this is a shortcut. If there's, if we just have one variable var, and we want this thing to be maybe true if they're over 18, that means they're an adult, at least in the United States. If they're under 18, then they're uh, a kid. So maybe we'll have a variable that signifies whether they're older than 18, and we'll set that variable here, and then we can do a condition. If they're greater than or equal to 18, then we'll set it to true, or else false, right here. And maybe I'll take this statement, put it up here. So now, 
if they're an adult older friend and so now instead of welcome 20 year old you say welcome adult or friend so um, this right here is called the conditional statement it come you put parentheses around it and this is anything that resolves to true and false so we can do comparisons or we could just put true and false in here so um, anything that resolves to true and false so if the age is over 18 then we'll set the adult equal to true notice there's the equal sign right here so adult is going to change is going to get true now if they happen to be younger than 18 then it will say uh, do the, the stuff after the colon and it will be false so that means the adult will be false so let's test this since we know that it's always going to welcome Fred we'll make sure the visitor is somebody else besides Fred so we have Cherry visiting and he's older than 18 so um, he's older than 18 so it should do that after I save it um, so it's welcome ad adult because Jerry is older than 18. Um, now if we say have a 15 year old who is an adult, we don't welcome the non-adult, non-Fred person. Um, this is a shortcut. You can probably also um, do something like this. Here we'll put in quotes around these, and maybe here adult and child. And we refresh that. Now we get child printed out. Um, so this echo statement is going to print out. It's going to evaluate the age. If they're older than 18, then it will print out adult. If not, then they'll print out child. So this is a shortcut for an if statement. You could do the same thing with an if statement, but this is kind of an if statement all wound up into one line. It's called a conditional statement.